Not a day goes by when Ma in her blue waitress uniform stops me reading the Oakland Tribune to dictate precisely at 3.30 p.m. the next day's menu. All right, Ma says in English, tomorrow we'll serve baked spaghetti, beef stew with potatoes and carrots, fried breast of lamb, and boiled ox tongue with Spanish sauce. My mouth waters as she decides the next day's special. Ma doesn't need to say breaded veal cutlets, fried oysters, or prime rib of beef because they were always on the menu every day. Though I can write in shorthand, I scribble the specials in longhand and step down into Baba's office and insert a piece of paper into the old royal typewriter. I type tomorrow's menu watching the purple letters spring up like soldiers marching in unison, filling the paper such plums and grapes for our daily lives. I proofread carefully the type menu, making sure I typed the correct specials that mom dictated, making sure that each item is spelled correctly because spell check was a futuristic ploy. <laughs> With the labor of my fingers, my eyes, my back, staring at the list of items that range from halibut steak for 50 cents to prime rib of beef for 95 cents, knowing that my fingers helped to support the family, my secretarial skills a blip of the family business, known as the Great China Restaurant, Ai Zhong Wa at 723 Webster Street in Chinatown, Oakland, California. When my sisters and I labored without wage but survived with tips and ngang lok fan, beef over rice, served us by bak gong, the head cook when Ma and Ba Ba weren't looking. <laughs> when World War II filled the great China with customers, Pinky of Milan's Jewelers, Mr. Carlson of Carlson's Confectionery, Johnny the boxer and his girlfriend Lucille with her ruby red lips and white teeth. Flan doi, single men, families, pensioners, workers from gas stations, the parachute factory and herb and poultry stores. Tenants from the Aloha Hotel, gypsies with their love for bowls of steamed rice overflowing with gravy. Typing the menu, a job I didn't apply for but became mine in between making coffee, milkshakes, some lettuce, and tomato salads, anxious for tips that filled the glasses kept beneath the Formica counter. Understanding even then that money grew not on trees, but through our labor, typing the menu, drying silverware, stringing string beans, refilling granulated sugar jars, washing the coffee urn on tiptoes, sweeping, mopping, ba-ba, inventorying and planning the next day supplies, vegetable oil, flour, 50 pound sacks of rice, flank steak jello, the Great China Restaurant, our second home, sandwiched between regular school and Chinese school, our days of wonder, questions, fatigue, anticipation, and simmering American dreams. And this is my sister Flo did. If you buy the book, you'll have your own copy. But my <laughs> sister Leslie smoking a cigarette and reading the menu in the back. <laughs> and um, we sat in the back booth and ate our meals. But as soon as customers came, up we went and went to work. And the other poem I will share with you is the one that is in my own book. I have several books of poetry published. And um, this is called Reminiscing About a Chinese Restaurant. Last night I ate dinner at a Chinese restaurant. Roast pork and mashed potatoes, rice and corn, a wedge of custard pie. Others were eating rice with bean cake and cha su. One man ate corned beef and cabbage and shimmering yellow cube, jello cubes. Glasses clanged, silverware shook, oil sizzled to another Chinese restaurant of Chinatown. A girl who washed glasses, wiped forks, knives, and spoons, who typed the next day's menu, who squeezed oranges for juice, large, small, but always fresh. In the back kitchen and damp air, a man bakes apple pies and banana shortcake. A cigarette dangles from his mouth, his eyes half closed. When the afternoon off comes, he shuffles off to his rented room, pulls up his sleeve, sticks a needle into his arm. He escapes orange delicious, and I run upstairs, stuff myself with strawberry pie. My skin rises and hides, my skin wants orange, wants delicious. I awaken. 
more dishes, more menus. I refill the sugar jars, granules spark where I cover them up, and salt shakers take precedence on the formica counter in wooden booms. Slide and run, run and slide. Wait on those who inhabit this Chinese restaurant. A man with a crutch and one leg limps downstairs from the Aloha Hotel, sips his dinner of black coffee and sugared bombs. A Shriner and his wife with wide smiles eat halibut steak, rice and gravy and apple pie. The Shriner shakes his tassel with authority. He splits one 60 cent dinner for his two young daughters. Three slices of whole wheat bread for a glass-eyed customer who smears ketchup on each slice, thick, juicy, oozing over the plate. The man paints red in my father's eyes who shouts to me, give him the bottle with the quarter-inch ketchup or we will not survive. We will not survive. A young gypsy girl and a sallow old man sit in the back booth. He lifts her skirt caresses her thigh, feeds her a spoon of rice. She shivers, I look away. A gas station attendant peeps behind the American menu, one eye on the other waitress. His lips parted, he orders leg of lamb with mint jelly. His money is good, is green. He pays to eat and look at the other waitress. And I eat and my skin itches, know nothing, not its hives, its question marks. I return to the Chinese restaurant, this blinking coffee cup neon sign. I read the menu, examine it inside out. The ink spills, the calligraphy sprawls. This Chinese restaurant demands love, demands attention. Its walls expand, I slither inside. What with the glasses, the ovens, and chopsticks tell? What grease on uniform? What language beyond food? Uh, this is called Breakfast, Lunch, Dinner. In fact, is the title of my next book that's coming out hopefully this summer. Mm. And it's a book of poetry. A lot of it has to do with food, but other things. I'm a mm. acti political activist as well, and a writer, and I love movies, and jazz, and a whole lot of other things. So it's just not one thing, but I thought it would be really appropriate to read this here. Mm -hmm. and, um, so often you see the signs of restaurants as breakfast, lunch, dinner, right? So oh, that'd be a good title. So I wrote this, breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast. The night before, I placed the turkey carcass in the huge pot, turned the water to boiling. I, feel, I fill a rice bowl with raw rice, sprinkle a pinch of salt, and dip two teaspoons of vegetable oil to prepare the rice. Two hours later, the turkey meat falls off the bones, the work of the carcass completes it. Next, I pour the rice into the pot, let it boil, then simmer. Now for breakfast. I lay a full gai jok into a bowl, impressed with the shape of kernels of rice, with chopped scallion and shreds of turkey meat. Before I eat, I inhale the fragrance of love, then begin to swallow the full gai jok as if it's my last meal, lunch. The waitress places a square white plate before me. I hold my green chopsticks ready. My eyes take in a pyramid of green papaya, matchstick thin, with sliver carrots in a dressing of lime juice, fish sauce, and bird's eyes pepper. Coins of daikon and carrot decorate the four corners of the plate. White and orange moons convene the four seasons. Picking up the soy sauce dish of chopped peanuts, I shower the salad, my eyes flirting with the next customer's bowl of food. Intoxicated now with deep fried onion rings, mint, and basil leaves crowning my lunch, I guide the salad into my mouth. Dinner. Baba steams the jingo fan, topped with hamgoi, salted fish preserved for the soul. Mom tosses slices of fuzzy squash into the wok as they dance in concert with garlic and onion. Bowls of steamed eggs and owl food grace the table. And yes, the bowl of soup with sliced lotus root, a knob of ginger root, and fresh green onions floating on top. The soup, translucent and fragrant, steaming, heralds the sit-down dinner the family has one.
once a week on our Wednesday night off from six days of work at the Great China Restaurant. Thank you.